Welcome back to another Professional Picks college basketball video. Today, we're going to be looking at the Sunday slate for November 21st, and then a couple of the games in the following days. We didn't have the best day today, actually moved back down to even on the year, but we're not going to dwell on it too much since it's so early. So with that, we'll jump right into the content. As always, we have our partnership with Prize Picks. You can see there on the left, They'll match your first deposit of up to $100 using our promo code ROPIX. It's a daily fantasy app, so you could use it in states like Texas, Florida, and California. And a little bit of how it works, you have a flex play, and it's essentially a built-in promo. If one of your legs misses, you'll actually make a little bit of your money back. And then on three legs plus, you'll actually still profit if one of your legs misses. The power play is your traditional parlay. Once again, the promo code is PROPIX to get your deposit matched up to $100. With that, we're looking at our first game tomorrow. This one starts at noon, and it's Nova, technically at Purdue, but this is a neutral site game in Connecticut, making it a little bit more of a home game for Villanova, but I don't think that will matter too much in this one. The eye-popping stat for this is – to just look at the rebound differential, you can see there Purdue holds the advantage by about like eight, 17 and a half. So I think Purdue is going to dominate the paint in this game. Zach Eady and Travion Williams have been averaging over 30 points a game combined together. And I don't think this game will be any different with Villanova center Eric Dixon being about 6'9. And then their other forwards not really being traditional posts. That's where I think this game will be a little bit interesting. I think Nova's going to be able to shoot a lot of threes. They're guys like Dixon, Slater are really going to have to stretch Purdue out on the offensive end. But Purdue is just going to be able to score all day in the paint. So honestly, this will probably be a really good game to bet the over. However, I don't know how high that line is going to be. I assume it's going to be enormous. But as far as betting this one, I think I'm going to lean Purdue and I'll probably take them up to minus four and a half. I wouldn't be surprised if the line came out to that, even though Villanova is a higher ranked team. This matchup favors Purdue heavily, in my opinion, just because they have so much more size. And Purdue really just manhandled UNC today. UNC stayed in the game, but Purdue had the lead the entire time. I just think. Nova is going to have to shoot a lot of threes to stay in this game, and they're hitting them at a very high rate. They could win it, but I just think that's a little bit too risky for me. So I'm leaning Purdue in this one, dominating the game on the interior and on the glass. Next game we're going to be looking at is the two teams that lost to uh, both Villanova and Purdue. And I think this matchup is actually a little bit closer to even than the previous one. I think UNC will bounce back. They looked a lot better in their loss than Tennessee did. Tennessee got absolutely blown out by Villanova. But Villanova had that 20-point lead in the first half. So Tennessee kind of stuck around in the second half. Didn't really mean a whole lot, though, since Villanova was up by so many points. Tennessee shot five for 28 from three last game. And they have some good shooters like the Scobie, Justin Powell, Kennedy Chandler to shoot it a little bit. So I think Tennessee can't really play much worse than they did yesterday. And I think North Carolina will have the advantage in the paint in this one, although they're averaging less rebounds per game. I think Armando Bacot, along with Dawson Garcia and Brady Manning, will really show out a little bit tomorrow. I think Armando Bacot wins the matchup against John Fulkerson, just in size, athleticism, and skill. And then I just think UNC has a lot more options. Brandon Hunley Hatfield is going to be a lot, much better player at the end of the season than he is right now. Both of these teams have pretty decent depth, so I don't really think either team gains much of an advantage on that although it is back-to-back -back games, so they're definitely going to be turning to their bench a little bit more. In general, it's this one's a tougher game for me to lead. 
I could see an overreaction on the line. And if I could get Tennessee at, say, plus six or plus seven, something crazy like that, I would fail Tennessee in this one. Same thing as last game. This is a neutral site. And then for North Carolina, if I could get something close to even, which I don't really know what to expect from this line, if I get something close to even, I think I will take UNC. I know, so I'm basically just saying UNC is going to win by about six points, but I think that's where this game falls. Although Tennessee got destroyed yesterday, they're a very good program, and I think both of these teams are going to want to bounce back, obviously, after big losses. I think it's to be a really close one. The last game, I liked Purdue winning by a little bit and it going over. I think this game will actually hit the under. I don't know. I just think these teams are going to be a little bit worn out. Tennessee didn't shoot very well from three last game. I think they're going to bring it more on the defensive end, just not going to want to get down early. And then same for North Carolina. I think North Carolina shot a little bit better today. And at the end of the day, Purdue is just a much better team. So I don't, I don't think North Carolina is going to score in the 80s or whatever they did today. So I'll probably go on the under and then lean Tennessee if there's a decent amount of points. Otherwise, North Carolina, at the end of the day, keep saying that, but very close game. Tough to bet. Probably not an official play, but I like Purdue a lot. And then the last game we're looking at tomorrow is Michigan versus Arizona. This one actually has a line out. It's Michigan minus three and a half. And that's what we're going with. Wichita State just went to overtime with Arizona last night. And their best player, Edson Etienne, on uh, Wichita State, shot nine for 27 from the field. So pretty terrible. He hasn't been playing great this year, but somebody's shooting 33% on that big of a volume. That's just very detrimental for the team. And their best post, Morris Udezi, he fouled out in only 13 minutes. So Wichita State had no size, and really Arizona just didn't take advantage of it. Christian Coloco, good rim protector. So that'll help against Hunter Dickinson, but he doesn't really provide much scoring. Tubelis looks pretty good, a little bit weak at times, just because he had such a big size advantage. And then my biggest problem with Arizona is they don't use uh, Benedict Matherin enough. I just think, like, he barely touched the ball at the end of the game, and that really helped Wichita State come back, take it to overtime. Arizona pulled it out then, but I wasn't that impressed. Also, Musa Diabate looks great against UNLV, going 14 points, seven boards. And I just think he's going to improve a lot throughout the course of the season. I think last night's going to give him some confidence as a freshman. I could see a, a repeat performance or at least something close to it. At the end of the day, Arizona's still undefeated. And Michigan has a loss. I think that's a chip on their shoulder. They're a very confident team. Hunter Dickinson is even a little bit cocky, but it's great for the sport. I think they come out and really run Arizona over. I like Arizona. I like this spread, Arizona, or Michigan minus three and a half a lot. It's probably my favorite play that I'm going to have on this video. And then taking Purdue up to minus four and a half. And then honestly, if you could get some a good spread on Tennessee plus money, I would take that. But that game might be an avoid for me, although it would be a very good matchup still, Tennessee versus North Carolina. And then the last game I'm going to feature on this video is Gonzaga versus UCLA. This one's on Tuesday, and I don't know what to expect from a spread, especially with Cody Riley getting injured. Um, that was a couple – that was a little while ago now, but I just think Gonzaga dominates inside this game between Timmy and Chet Holmgren. Uh, UCLA is guy right now is Miles Johnson, and he just hasn't looked as great as what everybody expected at the start of the year. So you're really relying heavily on Jaime Jaquez and some of these other guys like Peyton Watson to help out on the glass. But I just think Gonzaga, a little bit too much talent, a little bit too much size advantage that they – roll Arizona or not roll but I think they beat UCLA in this one I think UCLA has looked beatable in the game against Villanova whereas Gonzaga's looked pretty unstoppable they 
beat te- Texas handedly. And uh, I just don't think UCLA is going to pull this one out. But this is another neutral site game, too. This one is going to be in Las Vegas, actually. And then no slide for this one, but on I think it's Monday, Ohio State plays Seton Hall. Seton Hall got a win against Michigan. And then Ohio State's coming off their loss. So I think Ohio State bounces back. And I don't know what to expect either from a spread. This video is kind of tough, but just trying to go more in depth too on that analysis. And you guys pretty much just make your own decisions at the end of the day anyways. But I think EJ Liddell and Ohio State comes back against Seton Hall on Monday. They EJ Liddell looked great on the just blocking shots, but he got called a couple fouls on the offensive end where he was just either making a strong post move or blocking out. So I think I think Xavier got a couple um, just home friendly calls that game. I Xavier still beat him. Uh, Ohio State was down the whole game, but I think EJ Liddell bounces back a little bit as far as scoring wise. He had like seven or eight blocks, so he still found ways to impact the game. But I just think Zed Key, uh, Kyle Young, and those other guys start to figure out their roles a little bit more. Justice Suing and uh, Seth Towns played all of last year pretty much. So these guys are getting a little bit more opportunities. They're getting used to their roles. I think I think they figure it out and catch Seton Hall just a little bit. Uh, not really a trap game, but Seton Hall might be a little too confident going into this one uh, off of the win against Michigan. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments or let me know what you guys are taking. If you either agree with me, disagree, uh, I'd love to know what you guys have. I will be putting out some more tweets with other bets. I know this might not have been the most helpful since there's only the one spread there, but I just wanted to get this video out now since I probably won't be able to do it in the morning before these games start with having the Nova versus Purdue game being at noon. But I hope when the lines come out that does this video does help you guys make your your bets and I hope you guys have some good luck this week. I I'm hoping to finally break out of that that even slump I've been in.